Good morning. Welcome to worship. God be with you. And also with you. I'm Rob Kopp. I'm the pastor of Bemidji United Methodist Church. And... And I am Michelle Miller. I'm the pastor of Wesley United Methodist in Crookston and Erskine United Methodist and Faustin United Methodist. So today we are having uh, worship and fellowship for four churches together. And uh, the sanctuary, as, it, uh, as we have it constructed here, is in our living room in the Parsonage in Crookston, Minnesota. It is a joy and blessing to be with you this morning. And... Uh, and what a, uh, thus far, beautiful uh, Memorial Day weekend that we are having. And so uh, with that, let us worship God together. Let us join together in the call to worship. Thanks be to God who shores up the weary. Though we grow tired, she upholds us. When impatience threatens our faith, when we feel helpless or afraid, she sustains us. Into God's care we cast all our anxieties. With a steadying hand, God ushers us forward. Her love renews and revives our spirits. Drawing us ever closer to each other, God reveals evil's deceitful ways. Through paths of justice, she will lead us to healing. Her wisdom will be our guide. Let us join together in singing For the Healing of the Nations. Let us join together in the opening prayer. Divine, Divine wisdom, wisdom, be our companion as we endeavor to deepen our knowledge of both good and evil. We long to be practitioners of justice, but the way is not always clear. Guide us in our efforts to become wise as serpents and soft as doves as we labor together in love. Amen. 
Now let us join together in the affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. The epistle lesson is from the book of 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, and I'm reading from the message. Friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Instead, be glad that you are in the very thick of what Christ experienced. This is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner. So be content with who you are and don't put on airs. God's strong hand is on you. He'll promote you at the right time. Live carefree before God. He is most careful with you. Keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plunged into these hard times. It's the same with Christians all over the world. So keep a firm grip on the faith. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, will have you put together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. And from the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne say, Look, God's dwelling is here with humankind. He will dwell with them, and they will be his peoples. God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. There will be no more mourning, crying, or pain for the former things have passed away. Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I am making all things new. He also said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, All is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end. To the thirsty I will freely give water from the life-giving spring. Those who emerge victorious will inherit these things. I will be their God, and they will be my sons and daughters. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. When this all started for me, when I realized that the virus first reported in China was becoming a pandemic, and that pandemic meant that it was going to affect me, I remember feeling surprised. It all happened so quickly, didn't it? It was like our whole world changed suddenly and dramatically. Things we used to be able to do without a second thought suddenly required thinking ahead. Things like getting together with friends and family over a holiday weekend. 
Think about the difference between Christmas and Easter this year, or even getting together this weekend. It's not the same, is it? The world has changed dramatically, and we have not all experienced this change in the same way. Some mornings I wake up, and all I want is that old world back. I wake up wanting the world where Michelle and I can fly to Cabo San Lucas in Mexico for an after Easter vacation, where we can sit beside a pool underneath a palm tree, drink fresh mango smoothies while talking and reading for as long as you want, maybe order shrimp nachos when we get hungry. When the biggest dilemma that I have to face is whether to play Michelle and Scrabble where she will inevitably beat me and uh, whether I can stand that kind of punishment. Oh, it's a harsh world in Cabo. And I could go on and on. But then if I keep talking about this food, I'll start to salivate and that doesn't go so well with preaching. I miss that old world. If you were living comfortably, and I have to say I was, we were, any shortcut back to that old world is a temptation. But let me come back to that. Years ago, I was a nurse who worked with quadriplegics. These are people who've had spinal cord injuries resulting in paralysis of their legs and partial paralysis of their arms. Imagine your life suddenly changing where you would never walk again, never do anything quite the way you used to. So it was our job as care providers to travel a difficult road of adaptive change with people who would just as soon not travel to this strange new world just as soon wake up one morning and discover that it had all been a bad dream. Their old life died with the accident, and they didn't really want this new life. It was our job to hold open the possibility of finding enough important and sustaining in this new life while they decided whether they wanted it. Not everyone chose the new life, but most did. Many surprising even themselves. One of the people I worked with had been uh, a logger. Uh, went up in trees and, you know, cut logs. And uh, one of the trees, uh, when he was cutting it, it kind of whipped around and hit him in the back of the neck. And, uh, and he ended up a quadriplegic. He was an outdoors person. And so when he came to, uh, into rehab, uh, he said, I'm not working with computers. I'm not working with computers. I'm not doing it. Uh, I love being outdoors. And uh, I was bitter about that, bitter in that loss. So um, he had completed rehab, and I saw him maybe a couple of years later, and I asked, so Jim, what are you doing these days? He said, uh, working with computers. And yeah, I know. So imagine my surprise when I was sitting at a barber shop one day and noticed a scar on the neck of someone who was working there. It was the telltale surgical scar of someone who had been through surgery after breaking their neck. It's the kind of scar I knew well. So I had to ask, where did you get that? Oh, this, he said. Well, I was a quadriplegic. So he told me a story. After breaking his neck in a motor vehicle accident, he woke up and was told that he would never walk again, never be able to use his arms like he used to. Not only that, but he was in a hospital ward with other people who were in the same situation, all of them recovering from accidents that dramatically changed their lives lives for which they would never be able to go back to their old life, back to the way things were. The person I was talking to walked and talked and moved his hands in much the same way that I move my hands and stand before you today. You never would have guessed that he was disabled. This seems like a contradiction in the story, right? But here's what happened. 
In rare, very rare instances, some people with spinal cord injury get much, much better. Now, it doesn't happen very often, so they are all told the same thing. You will never walk again. And since they are all sharing in this common experience, the people adapting to spinal cord injuries, well, they start to form friendships. They have that in common. And they're going through it together. And living with a spinal cord injury, well, that's a terrible thing to live with but at least they're living with it together. So imagine that this is your situation and these are your friends. Everyone is starting to make progress, but you suddenly start making progress that the others don't. How would you feel? Elated? Elated and then guilty? Elated and then some feeling like you had betrayed your friends? Angry on behalf of your friends? <sighs> complicated, complicated feelings, aren't they? Sure, this person I met had a remarkable recovery. But I would argue, and I think you would agree, that his life would never, ever go back to being quite the same after an experience like that. Do we agree? So here we are, gathered as people who receive the good news of Jesus Christ. We've come together in loss of the old world, bearing grief over uh, what we have personally lost. In some way, we'd all like to go back to that world before the pandemic. But we come together with expectant hope, for this is the good news, a new heaven, and a new earth, new lives, really, that are somehow better than what they have been before. It's a promise that leads us from the life we had to, uh, the life we had to the life we have. And that life, that promise of new life is not only in heaven, but it's right here on earth, right in the here and now, this moment, this time, much as we might like to, we can't go back to the old life. Even with the miracle of a new vaccine, think a miracle like recovering from a spinal cord injury when you've been told you would never recover. Even with such a miracle, we can never go back. Our old lives ended with the onset of this pandemic. And we are just beginning a new life. We in our in, are in our infancy of living into this promise. We are like the Hebrew Egyptian slaves who have just been set free by God. Just like them, we may long for the days of old, even if those days were miserable. Because the days of old are familiar and often better in our memories than they were as we experienced them. And so, friends, we come to this place of temptation. We come to the place of placing our narrow self-interest in front of the needs of our community. There are many public officials and celebrities who will represent this temptation, and it's easy to point fingers at those who are tempting us. But their temptations would be powerless if those temptations were not also a part of us. They appeal to what we feel. Wherever this new life is leading us, we travel this road together. And so we may be tempted to abandon those who are most vulnerable or put them at greater risk through the way that we act, not only in church, but the way that we act in public. But noticing that um, 
I'm not sure if my perception is accurate or how it fits in, but I've been noticing and I've been talking with uh, other people that um, it seems like there are more people out in the public now. Maybe it's the onset of uh, late spring into summer. More people who are not uh, maintaining a safe distance from one another. Like um, maybe just hoping, you know, that, um, yeah. It's all, it's all uh, exaggerated. Nothing bad will happen. I sort of hope those people are right. But I fear, I fear and hope at the same time that we've entered a new world. It's a bit of Lent for the season of Easter that we're coming to, the season before Pentecost. And yet maybe it's the way that the Spirit alights itself in us. Maybe we're still caught up in this time where we need to repent and believe the gospel. And believe that God's love is for each of us as individuals, but God's love is also for all of creation. And it's all of creation in this time that cries out, in need. So here's my prayer for you, my thought for you, my hope. May you experience a new heaven and a new earth in this season where God is calling us out of the strange old life that we had into an also strange life of hope and possibility. A life where our hearts are curiously changed. A life where we travel this road together. Amen. Let us join together in singing, In Unity We Lift Our Song.
Now let us pray. For all who need a sense of Christ's presence in this time and wisdom for following in God's path, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of the nations and cities of the world, that they may be wise in their administration of government during this pandemic and selflessly serve the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us in our churches, that we may faithfully tend the family of God during this season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, and all healthcare workers, and hospital and clinic providers who tend the sick and dying, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and those in quarantine, that they may find comfort and care in their time of need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who live and work in congregate living situations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in military service for our country and all who remember them with gratitude, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the earth you have given to our care and for all creatures who share it with us, that you may be glorified in all your works, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we lift up our other concerns, our joys, praying in the silence of our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we, your children, never pray alone, but with all your saints in all the world. Therefore, let us pray together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen So we come to our time of uh, receiving our offering, acknowledging offering, that the offerings that we bring. And uh, so let me express that I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for our four churches, uh, for all the times uh, that we've been reaching out, that we've found ways to have fellowship with one another. Uh, I was grateful for the uh, special distancing birthday party we had for Michelle last Sunday. Uh, where folks from here in uh, in Crookston showed up, and uh, we were able to uh, to celebrate together and uh, to visit with each other outside, uh, I think safely. <laughs> and uh, I'm grateful for uh, the financial support we've been receiving for the churches that we participate in being community through uh, through giving of that resource. Uh, I'm grateful for um, the work of our annual conference and our bishop as we've been navigating how to be um, the United Methodist Church in Minnesota during um, these strange times that, uh, that we are living in and all the ways that, uh, that uh, we live in the complexity of how we can be church and how we can be safe at the same time. So um, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for um, the encouragement and support 
that you you have given uh, Michelle and I in uh, doing these worship services together and uh, to be doing them from home. Um, overwhelmingly, uh, it has felt like support and encouragement for us to do it. Uh, I'm grateful for your grace uh, for the early times when we were doing this and things were kind of falling apart and the doors were uh, getting blown off their hinges and all those things <laughs> seemed to be happening. Um, I'm grateful for our sense of humor that we've been able to share in that. And, uh, and yeah, grateful for um, the many different ways that, that uh, people have made sacrifices so that we could, uh, we could have this time together, um, including the sacrifices that, that uh, veterans have made and uh, those who, um, not only those who've, who've uh, died on the battlefield, but those who uh, have given of their life to um, support uh, what we're able to experience here today. And so um, at this time, uh, let us um, name and claim the offerings that we give to our churches, whether those offerings are mailed in or in whatever form they come. And, uh, and also um, just naming the, that there continues to be an electronic option for folks in Bemidji. And uh, if that's something you want to, uh, to commit yourself to, um, there's a, a link for that on our web page and on our Facebook page. And so um, thank you again for the offerings that you bring. Let us join together in the prayer of dedication. God, our comfort and our strength, bless our offerings and renew our spirits. As you call the faithful to courage in these days, we hope to rise to the occasion. Where you ask us to endure, bring us companionship in the struggle. Where you ask us to share what we have, may our hearts overflow with generosity. Where you ask us to open ourselves to radical change, make us brave and wild with imagination. For your kingdom, enable us to live the love we desire. Amen. So we come to the benediction. Let the righteous be joyful, for God is the defender of justice and the upholder of truth. Whatever obstacles stand in the way of peace, they will crumble before love. And so let us press on together, shouldering grief in community, pursuing wisdom with patience and urgency, and seeking justice through the Spirit of Christ alive in us. God will sustain us, and hope will not disappoint. Go in peace. Amen.